In the last video, I showed you how to create this wood material in Keyshot using a photo I took with my phone. I'll link it up down below. However, if you apply this material to a larger surface, it creates a noticeable repeating pattern, and that's not cool. First, we're gonna make it seamless using Photoshop since you're likely already paying for it. Then I'll show you a tool that makes the process a million times easier. I've opened up my texture in Photoshop and I'm going to create a new document that's 2000 by 2000 pixels. And I wanna move these so that I can see and work on both of them at the same time. Next, we'll take our image texture, click on it, go to edit, define pattern, and I'll call this one tile one and just hit okay. Then in the new document, I will go and create a new fill layer and choose pattern. Then we wanna use this drop down and choose tile one, which we just created. And I wanna scale it down until it repeats. I'll try 15%. And now we can clearly see the issues that we have with tiling. When we look at the pattern on the left, one of the most noticeable features is this lighter region of wood. We need to even out the values of this texture in order to make it look seamless. So we'll go back to our texture document. We're gonna to go to image mode and change it from RGB to lab. Then go to the channels and isolate the lightness channel. From here, we're going to go up to filter, then other, and high pass. I want to move this slider around until the value of the wood grain looks as even as possible. This is the number one thing that will make this texture more successful looking. And I'll hit OK. Turn on lab at the top and then go back to image mode and turn it back into RGB. And I'll return to the layers tab. From here, I'm going to go back up to edit, define pattern and call this one tile two and hit enter. Then we'll go back to our pattern document, double click on this adjustment layer and we're just going to use this drop down to load the latest version called tile two. From there, we can see that we've gotten rid of most of the tiling issues we had to begin with. Now looking at the pattern on the left, the next major issue we have to solve is this very noticeable diagonal wood grain. It's one part where the wood grain is wider than the rest and it's at an angle and if we zoom out we can actually see it repeating almost like a, a zigzag stripe. So we're going to drag a guide and I will line it up with the bottom of where this particular wood grain starts here. We'll select our texture and hit control T to transform, then right click and go to distort. What I wanna do is drag the right up hand corner and I'm gonna hold shift so it goes in one direction. And I wanna drag to the right until I've straightened out this dark wood grain that seems to be going diagonally right now. That looks pretty good, so I'll hit enter. Next, I need to crop this. So I'll hit C to get the crop tool and click on my image. Now this is interesting because we stretched our texture beyond the bounds of the artboard we're working on. It didn't get trimmed, it's just not visible anymore. So I wanna make sure this delete cropped pixels is on and hit enter and that's going to trim those extra pixels out there. That is important for the steps that we are about to do. So I'll get rid of my guide and what I wanna do is use a filter called offset. It's under other. This allows us to move our texture around. For example, if I see horizontal pixels to the right, if I type in 50, our texture moves to the right. So I'm gonna type in 175, that's looking pretty good. And then what I wanna do is use the crop tool to get rid of these extra pixels. So I'll hit C and I wanna move this in until I'm pretty much right up against the dark wood grain and I'll hit enter. And then from here, we'll go back and redefine our pattern. We'll call it tile three. And then we'll go to our pattern and load in tile three. And now you should see we are nearly seamless. One more thing that I'm noticing is this gray region. It's a little subtle, but it repeats. And I wanna see if I can get rid of it. Okay, back in my texture document, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer called Vibrance. Right now, if I increase the Vibrance, I'll bring in some of the yellowish, reddish warm tones. If I bring in the saturation, I will increase the amount of color here in the document. Next, I wanna use the mask. So I'm going to go get my gradient tool and make sure I've got a linear gradient from black to white. If I hold Alt and click on this document, this mask, I can see what I'm doing. If I hold Shift and left click drag, I'll create a gradient. If I get out of this by alt clicking on this mask, we can see the effect that we added is only applied to the upper region of this image. 
I'll go back and adjust this mask so that we are only really affecting the upper third of my texture, a little bit higher. And if I get out of this, we can see if I toggle this on and off, we're only adding a little more color up top. So now that I've added my mask, what I want to do is dial in the strength of this effect. So I'll bring the vibrance down quite a bit and the saturation very far down. I don't want this effect to be very noticeable. Just trying to color correct a little bit of that gray part up top. I will go ahead and select these two layers, Control Alt Shift E, merge those into a new layer up top, and we'll do just as we've done before. Edit, define pattern, tile four back into our pattern document. We'll load that in and see if we're any better off. Okay, and it looks to me like it's better. We could go back and forth on that, but for now, you know how to do it. I'm gonna move on to the last part that I want to work on, which is the actual seam here. I wanna go back into the filter offset, and what we're gonna do is set the horizontal to zero, and as we use the vertical offset, we will start to bring our seam into view in the middle of the document. I'll hit okay. To fix this, we're going to use the clone stamp tool. So we'll grab that. I want a brush that's medium softness, maybe a little harder. And if I hold Alt, I'll get this target. Click once to sample. And as I click a region where the seam is, I start to copy the pixels from somewhere else on the document over our seam. Try to sample from areas that are further away in the document that are not going to look out of place. And this is where you're going to just spend a little more time doing a little more trial and error. And this is really just kind of an artistic thing. Now, I've also noticed that the edges of the brush can create some soft artifacts. So sometimes I'll grab a sharpening brush set to about 50%, and I'll just click a few times in this area to sharpen up around the seam. Next, I wanna go back to filter offset, and we're gonna go back to where we were. We're going to redefine our pattern one more time, go back to our pattern fill layer, and load in this latest version without the seam. Now, since I'm still seeing a little bit of repeating on the side seam, we can repeat the last step I just did by doing an offset and clone stamping it. Or I can come in and see if I can fix this with a little bit of a crop. Let's see if that works. There we go. And in my opinion, this is pretty much good enough. It depends on exactly how it's going to be used in Keyshot. Now that we've made our texture seamless in Photoshop, let's see how it holds up in Keyshot. I'll open up the material graph in Keyshot and simply replace the old texture with the seamless version. It works pretty well if you ask me. Of course, more time and care could be spent making an even better texture if you really needed to. But wait, there's more. Let's accomplish the same results in a matter of a few seconds. I've downloaded a free trial of a software called Pixplant. Next, I'll load my texture in and it's automatically applied to a model on the left that's lit by an HDRI. Next, I'll go to the tiling section and increase the equalized brightness setting and click generate. Our texture is magically seamless. This software gives you hundreds of controls to make epic textures really, really easily. And it'll even generate metallic, roughness, displacement, normals, ambient occlusion, and opacity maps too, all from your base texture. When you're happy with your results, you can save out all the maps with a single click. They have plenty of tutorials on their YouTube channel and a license will cost you less than an unopened box of Rice Krispie cereal from 1995. Until next time, happy rendering.